Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Jones's Falcons going up against Tate's Lions. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL sends us to the state of Michigan as we are inside Ford Field in downtown Detroit. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Ford Field tunnels, and the noise level in this place just about off the charts. They are set for football as the Lions get ready to do battle with the Atlanta Falcons. And we say hi again, everybody. Brandon Gordon here as we count down the kickoff. I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, Larry pointed out in the open, we've got a pretty good matchup of wide receivers here this afternoon, don't we? And those guys have such a big impact on the game nowadays. We know it's a throwing game, but the guys who can go up and get it, the guys who can break tackles after the catch and make bigger plays, Oh, yeah, they love spotlight as well. They want the football. They want the attention. The children will grow, and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. The arm has always been evident. The maturity has really increased in the last couple of seasons. How about 2016 for Matthew Stafford? Eight game-winning drives in the fourth quarter of overtime, the most by a quarterback in a single season in the Super Bowl era. In fact, one Detroit newspaper put the odds of all those comebacks occurring at 8.65 billion to one. <laughs> it's crazy. 8.65 billion to one. I don't know that lightning will strike twice, but what a season. On first down at Stafford. And no incomplete. Boy, they took a shot there on the first play. Tried to start it out with a bang. But it's second down. And we look now at the Lions offense. With Matthew Stafford at quarterback and Marvin Jones and Golden Tate at wide receiver, we know that Detroit is proficient at throwing the football. But they want to increase their running game production. Only 30th in the league in 2016. They went out and signed offensive guard T.J. Lang and right tackle Ricky Wagner in order to try and get the running game going. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's Still supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. Second down run for Abdullah. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. The starting defense for the Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons defense of 2016 was ranked 25th. But don't get caught up in the numbers. The last eight or nine games of the season, things really started to click for head coach Dan Quinn, who really ran that defense based on what he had run in Seattle. And it really is predicated on speed, speed, speed. Every level of the defense. And Vic Beasley, their outside linebacker in his second season, had 15 and a half sacks and six forced fumbles, both which led the league. Third and long, it's Stafford. Complete to Abradaris. A really good pickup of 28 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Oh 
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Abdullah. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. And it's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. They go with Abdullah again. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Stafford hands to Abdullah. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. So the Lions go backwards there, and unfortunately that's something they saw a lot in 2015. They had the fewest rushing yards of any team in the NFL. And it's one of those dubious titles that no one really wants to claim. Even teams who say, well, I don't worry about running it because we throw it all the time. Being able to run it when you want to, is a key to success in the NFL, and Detroit struggled doing that. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll try the air now with Stafford. Out to the flat for Reddick. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit at the 36. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. and really gets them amped up as they go forward. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Grady Jarrett able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Here comes the Lions punter now. Justin Hardy deep for Atlanta. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be let out by the number one overall pick of the 2008 draft, the man they call Matty Ice, quarterback Matt Ryan. He finished second only to Drew Brees in total passing yards in 2016. In fact, he had 4,944 yards, so close to that 5,000-yard mark. We had multiple games last season where he didn't finish the game because his team was so far ahead. They go play action here on first down. And his first look is incomplete. Let's look at the offense. Devontae Freeman, this is a guy that you wanted to talk about, so take it away. Brandon, have you seen a running back play with such joy as well as such fury? I love the way he runs the football and attacks defenses. So the incomplete pass brings up second down.
Throwing again. Ryan. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Partner, our parents always told us that relationships were going to be important in life. Taylor Gabriel <laughs> knew Kyle Shanahan in Cleveland before he was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. And boy, that payoff for the Falcons picking him up. Yeah, last year he had more touchdowns actually than Julio Jones. He had seven, Jones had six. And good parental advice there, Mr. Davis. And the coach has decided to throw the red flag. He will challenge this play. third down a nickel formation here defensively out of the gun it's Ryan and it's complete Hooper and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory a really nice gain of 25 yards Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. And now a first down following that long gain. To throw again is Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. The completion good for three and it's second down. And now the Lions defensive starters. Detroit's numbers on defense in 2016 were not horrible. They were number 19 against the pass and number 18 overall. But where they think they'll make a big jump in 2017 is being able to get a pass rush going again. Ziggy Ansah, their star defensive end, played with a bad ankle for most of the season and wasn't able to duplicate his double-digit sack numbers of 2015. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Julio back-to-back all-pro seasons. Last year, over 1,400 yards. Averaged over 100 yards per game. Tops in the NFL. And that's the stat that catches my eye. Over 100 yards per game. And you always hear about defenses saying, we can rotate, we can send people in this direction, we can do things to limit a wide receiver. Yet Julio Jones averages over 100 per game. One of the most sensational stats I've seen in recent football. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. So here we go, first and ten now. Freeman again, a first down carry. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. And hang on here. Freeman shaking up. Remaining on the ground after that last play. While the trainers take a look. We'll step aside.
Now Ryan on second down. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. Touchdown, Falcons! Taylor Gabriel, 35 yards. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right, RAC? Run after catch, and he loves that, and he's going to carry that in at contract time. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. It's good, and that gives the Falcons a 7-0 lead. So that drive takes them down the field in eight plays, and the Falcons score to cap it off. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And heading back out there now, the Falcons defense here. And we're going to get a peek at some of the hits that have helped them get this first half lead. And you know how the best hits happen? by being really good on that side of the ball in terms of fundamentals, being in the right spot, diagnosing plays well, and being there at the point of attack. They are really making it happen. shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Out of the gun, Stafford. It's complete to Golden Tate. And all the way down to the 12. It's a big play. Stafford to Tate. 43 yards. And there's Golden Tate doing exactly what he does well extra yards after the catch. Yeah, exactly. To your point, among wide receivers, no one had more yards after the catch than Tate last year, 635. <laughs> Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Stafford gives 
to Abdullah. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Ten yards still left on second down. From the gun, here's Stafford. Incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. From the gun, Stanford. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Rasheed Hagman in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point. So no problems converting there. send it away following the made field goal. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. quickly brought down but a nice little gain that one good for 10 yards and it'll be second and very short on any explosive run you can almost feel the ground shaking and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners run around the offensive line in pregame get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game Second down following the run. Ryan now off the bootleg. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. 
Throwing now. Ryan on first down. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. The completion good for three, and it's second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Here's Coleman. And some room to maneuver. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now Ryan on first down. Sanu with a grab over the middle. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal when we come back. 7-3 the score. We're back to the Motor City after this. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Touchdown run. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run. Making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle. No running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So the drive there took six plays, and Tevin Coleman polished it off with a touchdown run. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. 
Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. This one up to the 26. Credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Again, it's Abdullah. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. A good run as he works his way for nine that time, and it'll leave him with a third and just a few inches. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there, about to break a big one. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run here. Abdullah. They find some open field here. And he gets it down to the 48. Enough for the first. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. I know it's a cliche and coaches always talk about it's a team game. We need all 11 to win. But let's face it, Detroit really needs Amir Abdullah to have runs like that all season long. He missed a lot of time with injuries, especially recently. Now, Theo Riddick wound up leading the Lions in rushing last year with just 357 yards. This is Theo Riddick. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Operating from the gun, Stafford. And his throw here is incomplete. Jared Aberderis, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Come on, come on, Set to, 60. to throw on third down. Stafford. And that is incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. 
Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Open now to get back in the end zone on this fourth possession. Ryan getting it out left side to Sanu it's a pickup of 16 there and it'll lead to a new set of downs defensively they just lost him he was waving his arm saying I'm wide open they found him yeah and it's so interesting about when a receiver starts to wave his arms because some guys right off the line of scrimmage they declare themselves open. You know, those guys throw the one arm up, right. hit me right now. In this case, he was so wide open that he was frantically trying to get his attention to make sure he got the football. And then I'm sure his only thought when the ball was in the air, don't drop it. Had too much time to think. Now a play fake here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he'll be knocked down sideways right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. <laughs> and what a big time play there. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here. He throws it away. And now it's third. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. From the gun, it's Ryan. It's caught, Jones. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield, but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that could knock a defense off balance, that will drive a team towards a victory. They'll run here with Freeman. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They'll look to run with Freeman. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. 
But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. It's Coleman here. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. Ezekiel Sigianza with a tackle for loss. Just think he's still learning the game of football. Didn't play a heck of a lot of it in his native country. And at BYU, was just scratching the surface before he hit the NFL. Yeah, from Ghana, where he really liked soccer and basketball. But football's okay for him, right? Yeah, I think it's worked out very well. Drafted on potential, he's realizing it here. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So the drive takes them inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game, probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best horse, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Stafford gives to Abdullah on the draw. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. On third down, Stafford. Escapes the sack. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Brooks Reed. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And it'll be Falcon football as they take possession. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter.
They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And this one brought in by Sanu. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On second down, Freeman. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. again and a good pick up there he gets about six up to midfield let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down huge difference as we know between second and four and second and eight and nine It's Freeman. A beautiful fake and heavy contact. He is knocked down hard at the 41-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was hoping to get that one to Tevin Coleman in space. And now it's second down. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Second down now after the incompletion. This is Coleman, and this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The Falcons averaged 34 points a game last year. Tops in the NFL with that powerful offense. And they're already looking for more here as they've got it first and 10. After the penalty, here's Freeman. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Ford Field after this.
When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports halftime report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, right? It's got to be you good. You tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, here's Ryan. It's caught over the middle, Hooper. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. tight end Hooper and he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11 that throw good for four it's second down I know the halftime's approaching but I don't think he's gonna want to take a break that's his fifth catch yeah they've really been targeting the tight end Second down, Ryan. This will be caught at about the five. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. this one away smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback but felt the pressure threw it incomplete So they're on the five-yard line here, second down. And, and he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Devontae Freeman, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons will extend their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends in a touchdown run from Devontae Freeman.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. All right, let's discuss Amir Abdullah. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. It's caught by Abradaris. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Fresh set of downs here. From the gun. Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. That'll bring up second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. On second and ten, Stafford. Ebron with it over the middle. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Lions on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and six. Stafford looks to throw again. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Stafford here. To the right side to Eric Ebron. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. He hit his first, this one from 38. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. 
So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Lions haven't played their best football and trailed because of it. The Falcons have come in and looked good as the road team. And will just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Falcons with possession halfway through one. Hooper is by himself here, and he'll be tackled at the 46-yard line. Falcons have it later on the drive. Gabriel's by himself here. He caps off the seven-play drive with the score. Falcons up by a touchdown. Now first and ten, Coleman's going to take it off the right side, and he'll go for the score. The Falcons push their lead to 11. Final seconds of the half. They run, it's Devontae Freeman. And he kept off the long drive with the TD. The Falcons lead ballooning to 21. Okay, Larry, a fairly one-sided first half as we get set to go in the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. They built a good first-half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. On first and ten, Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Second down now after the pass completion. Here's Ryan to throw. <laughs> Throwing middle, and it's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A Falcon first down. Ryan to his young tight end, Hooper. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Second and ten now. Ryan. Wide open receiver complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Now it's Ryan. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. And that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Coleman now. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. The offense on third down tonight, they've been good. Three for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. This is caught. A gain of seven that time, second goal. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Ball start offense. 
Well, this O-line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because if we were grading them on their performance in this game, a lot of pluses in their boxes so far. Now, this will be the ninth play on this drive. Second down. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. This offense so far on third down, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and goal. Ryan. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Ezekiel Ansah able to drop him for a loss of two, and that'll bring up fourth down. And there's no doubt in my mind that this guy has been eager for this season. Talk about Ziggy Ansah. For him to get back to sacking quarterbacks as he did in 2015, 2016 was really kind of a wash because of an ankle injury. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Mac, Matt Bryant. This just a 24-yard attempt. And Bryant's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. This is Abdullah, and he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Stafford now on second down. Ebron's got it. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Eric Ebron's got skills to spare. They just want the production to equal those, and he needs some good health in order to get that done. Had 61 catches in 2016, battling an ankle. Yeah, the surprise, though, just one of those 61 hit pay dirt. The Lions on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Stafford now to throw. This is Riddick on the screen. 
And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller since that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. down at Stafford and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down let's face it if you want to get back into the game these are the kind of throws you got to hit he's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him don't you think and those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass yeah that's a big miss Second and ten, Stafford again. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. some options on second and short. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Abdullah. And he gets it down to the 32. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, Go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Here's Riddim. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They go back to Reddick. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Now it's Stafford off the bootleg. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. 
Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get it in gear. They want to close this gap. now will send it away following the made field goal. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And the Falcons, they have the big lead. Yeah, you can't help but let your mind go there. You think Falcons, big lead, second half. They lost a game that they led by 25 in Super Bowl 51, as we all well remember. And I don't think it's going to change them a whole lot in terms of their mentality because they were an attack team. They always wanted to be on the attack. And you remember, a lot of people thought them staying on the attack maybe cost them in the Super Bowl against New England. But in this case... They definitely have learned that no lead is big enough, so I think they'll go out there with the idea of continuing to try to increase it. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And that was a nice play by the defense. And it is tough to be an offensive lineman nowadays, especially if you're dealing with how the defensive tackles have evolved. Their quickness, their agility, their speed has changed the big guys in the middle, the center and the offensive guards. Formerly, they were just power players. Now they have to be light on their feet as well to keep up with the speed of the defensive players. To throw on second down. Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. Spinning again. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Well, he's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice gain, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. So the offense has it first and 10. They run Devontae Freeman. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Brent, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth.
The Falcons on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Ryan. It's caught. Jones. Now Jones is hit. He lost the football. But the Falcons were able to recover, so they will keep possession. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. Now it's Freeman. Oh, look at that. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Ryan. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Now a first down throw, Stafford. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Back to the air, Stafford on second down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. First down. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Watch out, watch out. 
to throw again. Stafford. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Tate. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. Stafford. It's brought in left side by Tate. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. in the red zone this time. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. So that'll back him up five. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Following the penalty, Abdullah. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it a second down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a bat. there that leaves him needing about seven here on third down i once had a defensive player in the nfl tell me if i beat and dominate the guy across from me i'm helping my team but winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game but when you have good team defense as we just saw there of one broken tackle but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground throwing on third down stafford they bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Jack Crawford coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. From the right hash, this from 33. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that'll get the deficit down to 15. 
All right, so it's getting late in this one. Now, you could argue that they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but they still face a pretty uphill battle. Yeah, even with the field goal here, it's going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns now to get back in it, and that's going to be a tall order against this defense. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. Now Freeman, he's been busy today. He finds an opening past the 40, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Freeman again, a first down carry. And a good burst there, gets him seven up to midfield. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Here's Coleman. <laughs> Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now a play fake here on first down. Sanu with a grab over the middle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. This is Freeman. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. 
And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down, Ryan. Here's Sanu on the catch. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Ryan to Sanu, good for an Atlanta first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Fresh set of downs here. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the 5 at the 6. 10 yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. A 20th carry now for Devontae Freeman. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there. And now it's third down and inches. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Again, they'll run with Freeman. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. to throw it and that is caught touchdown Falcons Mohamed Sanu a one yard touchdown reception and the Falcons will add on to their lead is it okay if I break one of our rules partner which is to never call a game over until it's over because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown.
Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for Pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first and ten, Stafford. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. And on second and ten now. Throwing again, Stafford. And he comes back with one complete. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. On first down, Abdullah. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. On second down, here's Stafford. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Lions on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Stafford. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Getting set to go again, Mohamed Sanu is marching back onto the field now. So glancing at these numbers, I think they tell a story of... Hey, early on, he got hot. He got their attention. They've been able to hone in on him, shut him down a bit. He certainly did get their attention, and that's the ultimate compliment for a player, that when you come out in the second half, all of a sudden there's extra guys around you. There are different coverages rolled your way. That means you've done something really well. Now it's up to him to make his own adjustment and find a way to beat the new defenses he's facing. This is Freeman on first and ten. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Here's Freeman. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling 
that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long, everyone, from Ford Field.